These men are drug dealing bouncers. As soon as you snort it, five minutes later, boom. This man is the drugs trafficker who supplies them. They control the drugs trade in an English city. They thought they were untouchable <laughs> until World in Action went undercover. There's a lot of money to be earned here, mate. It's a whispering city, mate. It's a bad city to do it in. Coppers know nothing that nobody's told them. Nothing. If everyone kept that short, coppers did. Britain's drug trade is big, big business. Drug barons turn over millions of pounds a year, but the police appear powerless to stop them. It is desperately difficult to get the evidence against those people because they've learned through time they have a hands-off approach. It's very difficult to, to put their hands onto the drugs. It's very difficult to put them at the drug supply uh, chain. This man is one of them. From Nottingham, Wayne Hardy runs a network that dominates the drug trade in the Midlands, and he controls it from top to bottom. From the big deals which bring the drug shipments into town, down to the network of men who sell his merchandise in the pubs and clubs, Wayne Hardy is in control. But how does he get away with it? Tonight and next week, World in Action goes undercover to expose the untouchables. My name is Donald McIntyre, and I'm a World in Action reporter. But for the last 11 months, I've been working undercover using a false identity. I've been living in Nottingham as Tony Hearns. The bouncer, the would-be drug dealer, the lowlife. I came to Nottingham not because it had a bad reputation for drugs, but because it didn't. It's well known what goes on in London, Manchester and Liverpool, where the drugs trade has sparked deadly gang wars. But how bad are things in the dozens of ordinary towns and cities around the country? Ordinary cities like Nottingham, where ordinary people go peacefully about ordinary, respectable lives. Nottingham is typically Middle England, but how much does Middle England know of what goes on in its midst? Where there is a drug trade, pubs and clubs are the main point of sale, and there's a large and ready market. So it's in the pubs and clubs that men selling drugs have to reveal themselves. Doormen or bouncers are supposed to be in the front line, keeping out drugs and violence. They must see what goes on. This was the world I wanted to get into. As well as a new identity, I came to armed with hidden recording equipment. From now on, every move would be secretly filmed. When bouncers are not on the doors, chances are you'll find them working out. Many are keen bodybuilders, so I joined a couple of city centre gyms. I already knew that if I really wanted to know about drugs, there was one man I should get to know, Wayne Hardy. Amongst Nottingham's bouncers, he is spoken of with fear and respect. Everybody knows how he makes a living, but no one talks too loudly about it. I concentrated on the gym where he worked out, and I targeted him. Within a few weeks, we were on first name terms. I was his training partner and his confidant. Norman himself. Uh, Wayne is friendly with this man, Chris Bailey. They train in the same gym. Wayne, uh, Wayne has had a very good physique when he used to compete. Chris Bailey runs a company called well, Door Care, and he's been in the bouncer business for years. He supplies doormen to 75% of Nottingham's city centre pubs. Big chunky legs, big chunky arms, good frame, yeah, excellent. But it's not only Nottingham. Bailey provides hundreds of bouncers for pubs and clubs 
all over the Midlands and the north of England. Oh, any chance to have a word with Christian? Yeah, yeah Chris, this morning I, I, I told him he wanted a bit of work like it. He said, I'll see what he's like. He said, there should be something coming up with his euro. Brilliant. Mm. Chris Bailey has a manager who handles the daily running of the business, who hands out the jobs and pays the wages. He's called Gordon McLean. Hello. Yes. If bouncers are in the front line against drugs in Nottingham, Gordon McLean is the man who has to make sure they are suitable for the job. But I could have been a convicted drugs dealer many times over for all he cared. He just handed me a job, no questions asked. This is Tony. Nice to meet you. If you see somebody on the door with a, with a conviction that you know has got a conviction under the Data Protection Act, unless you're cleared and unless there are guidelines, you can't actually give those details to the employer. There's a need for legislation which would require training, the vetting of individuals who are employed, uh, and the regulation of uh, those who employ them. Uh, it's not good enough to look only at part of the picture. I began work here at the Imperial, noisy, popular, but well-behaved city centre disco pub. Weekend nights in Nottingham are boisterous affairs, and the city centre heaves with young people out for a good time. The Imperial is as lively a pub as any, and its four doormen are there to keep the peace. But as they warmed to me and talked to me as one of their own, I found out that some of the bouncers were more likely to start trouble than drunken customers. The reason? Some of the doormen themselves are taking illegal steroids. They take them to help with their bodybuilding, but it's well known that steroids make you aggressive, irritable, and violent. Well, you get a lot of bodybuilders always defending the steroids. It's a dude. I'm just on um, two shots of test, I'm fucking sad. Come on. But last night, I nearly went last night for that woman. My friend looked at me and went, no, I'm a fing head drive. I thought I was going like that. Why can't you just go? You're finding milk from a granny. A couple of weeks later, I was asked to work here. Beetroot is one of the most popular nightclubs in the city. It's been voted nightclub of the year. This is Lee Tomlinson, its head doorman. He tells me how he behaves when he's taking testosterone. You know you're losing it when you start to lose your temper, but the thing is, you, you kind of enjoy it in a way, and you're tearing yourself up. I know that's what I do. You do the same, mm. you're winding yourself up. You get, you're getting up on your temper. Good night, mate. Good night. Good night. See yeah. you. You're arguing with Mrs. and she's winding up. But for, I, look, I look at it sometimes, but for a split second, and, I can see we're going demolishing it, and I have, to, I have to turn off, you know what I mean? You can, I always try not to get violent with them. Try. Sometimes I shove her about, but I don't, not hard. But I never hit her. Never. But well, sometimes I'll fing you, you know what I mean? <laughs> sometimes when you're in bed and it touches your skin and you don't fing like it, you know what I mean? You know you're pulling that, it's bad, bad air between you. Bad vibes, yeah. Your skin touches your fing tree jacket, just fing. Near our bed and beat you out of bed, you know what I mean? We can't, can't do it. You've got to get a grip, haven't you? It wasn't long before I discovered how the doormen were supplied with their mood changing chemicals. They were delivered to them at work. Meet Richard, the local steroid delivery man. That's your windstraw. Excellent. All windstraw, that's the safe. If you need anything else, I'll give you a number now. Get me on. Right, I can give you a mobile number. Okay. Where do you work uh, for Gordon Storman? I used to do it here for ages. And yeah. I'm sad. <laughs> did, Tony, you? did Tony tell you? No. I battered someone. I had to move. Well, I didn't get sacked. I had to move. Yeah. But the real shock came when I discovered the identity of one of the main men further up the chain of supply. It was none other than Gordon McLean. Remember him? He's the man who hands out the door jobs on behalf of Chris Bailey. I've got some books for the gear, if you've got any, I've got the gear with you. I don't know. I'm having problems with it. The law's changing in September. Uh, becoming illegal to possess now. No great shakes, it'll still be valid. This man who promises peace and protection to the city's pubs is the very man who supplies the drugs, which can turn his doormen into raging bulls.